Okay, for AIT, we're looking at file-based backup systems. We're looking at three types. Full backups, differential backups, incremental backups. Let's understand what we mean by file. So a file is a recognisable thing like a Word document, an MP3, a movie. That is, it's a collection of data that's chunked together in a file. And we can know that about files, emailing to people, that type of thing. We're not talking about just data off a disk, we're talking about files. On the file, there's some important information. Most file systems have some sort of date stamp. This is the modified date stamp, tells you when it's created or each time or the last time it's been changed. And in Windows-based um, file systems and most other file systems, there'll be an archive bit. That is, one bit is either true or false, one or zero, yes or no, has it been archived? So the system knows that this has been archived or has been changed. They're the two systems that most um, backup systems are used to recognize a file, that it needs archiving or has been archiving, so the date or the archive bit. So for example, on day one, your computer has a bunch of files on it. Here we've got six files, all created on the 26th of the 6th, 2016, and none of them are archived. So we want to do a full backup. Well, full backup is fairly simple. Obviously, we just take an exact copy of all the files on that system, put a copy of them. Obviously, yeah, the best place to keep a copy is off-site in a secure location, but we've done a full backup of everything that's there. The following day, we come along, we notice that the full backup from day one is still there, but on day two, we've gotten two brand new files, highlighted in yellow. They've been created, and one of the files, the archive files, were shown as blue. One of those files has been modified, so it's no longer been archived. So simply on day two, another full backup is done. So an exact copy of everything is there. Also should be kept off-site, etc, etc. But it's just everything that's changed, it doesn't matter. We take a full copy of it. it takes a lot of disk space. It takes a lot of time to transport those files. So there's a few ways to make it a bit quicker. First one we're going to look at is a differential backup. Same thing, computer on day one, it's the same six files, all created on the 26th of the 6th, um, ready to go. Regardless, I know we're talking about differential, first one, day one, is a full backup. Everything's backed up, and you notice that the archive bit is set, so that it tells the system on your computer, all these have been backed up. Meanwhile, the full um, backup from day one should now safe be off-site in a secure fireproof fire location. Along comes the second day. Once again, exactly the same. Two created new files, and one of the existing files has been modified, so therefore it no longer backed up. With a differential, on the day two, all that simply has to happen is that those files that have been marked as being different to what happened on day one, they are copied across, this becomes my differential. So that for day two, to completely restore all the files, I need the two files, my full backup, plus whatever differential was on day two. Now day three comes along. And notice there's now three more files that have been created on the 27th, and one more file has been modified from the original files. Just highlight these, you can see here, the yellow files are the brand new, created, or newly modified on this day. The ones I've grayed out were the ones that are just different from day one. So all that has to happen is the original full backup from day one exists, doesn't change, that's secured off-site, it's not accessible, it's locked, it's safe. So a second backup is taken, so the differential on day three is taken, where it's all the files that have been modified and changed since day one. So it's not the entire file system, so you can see there's less files, they're doing a full backup. But in order to restore the full system, I need those two, the current um, differential day and the backup day one. The other differential day is no good to me anymore. That might be reused if it was a tape, reused for the following day. So it requires less backup because there's less files, and it's also quicker because there's only two um, two different things needed. The last one is a little bit more trickier. It's incremental. 
wasn't his favourite. It's, it's probably the most popular these days where we're using cloud-based, but it tended to be a bit tricky when using tape or media-based stuff. But let's have a look at how it works. Day one, same six files created on that same day. As in before, it starts off with a full backup for day one. No difference to before. We then come along in day two. We add some new files. Two new files have been added. And the same file there has been modified. So it's a new version of that file. Looks exactly the same as a differential. Those three new or modified files are copied across. So once that's been done though, all the files for that day are marked as archived. And we can see there we've got our three new files that are in the incremental. Remember, once again, best to have these off-site, secure, kept away from um, fire, damages, disasters, etc. Now along comes day three. We can see there's three files, four files have changed. There's two new files and two files have been modified. So they're different to what was on the full backup of day one. So we need to copy those across. So we copy just those four, whereas before in differential, we'd have to copy everything that's different from day one. We only copy what's different. So we put those down as incremental day three, mark all the files as being archived. So I've now got the full backup from day one, the files that have been changed on day two, the files that have been changed on day three. Come to day four, there's been one new file and another file has been edited. So there's two files that are not archived that need backing up. So once again, they're copied across, marked as archive in the original system, so the system knows what's backed up. But you can see here, yes, the full day, day one backup was a large file, but the amount of data for each incremental has only been a small amount. Now this was tricky because it meant if you're doing this on a normal seven day cycle where you have a different backup every day. In the old days where you used to use a tape, you'd have to have seven tapes probably 14 because you have two days of down um, two weeks and a week A and week B. And if you needed to restore the whole system, you needed to first put in your full backup from day one. You then need to add your incremental from day two. Then you need to add your incremental from day three. Then you need to add your incremental from day four. So there's four processes to back up the full system. Um, there's always a fear that if one of your tapes failed, that on Day three, that tape failed. You couldn't get the day four. And so it wasn't the preferred system with tape-based or media-based. But now with cloud-based, and especially when there's a lot of checks going on in cloud-based where has this file arrived, is the file in good condition, you can do this overnight when your bandwidth is not being used. It saves you some bandwidth, it saves you some time, and it means that you're getting a lot more granularity in your backups, you can go back to better versioning. So as we saw, some files were changed every day. Going through this way, I can go back to yesterday's version, the day before's version, to keep back and have a look to see where the actual does. So that's the three types of backup that we need to understand in applied information technology.